there's no more. You said I could eat a whole rotisserie chicken. Now I want to eat a whole rotisserie chicken. Biff is back. I'm Brent Young, butcher and owner of The Meat Hook and Cozy Royale. You might also recognize me previously from Primetime. And I'm gonna show you how to make this into these. So, I've been given this rotisserie chicken. And today we are going to turn it into a chicken Caesar wrap, buffalo chicken dip, and some fancy cassoulet. Oh, and I'm gonna make chicken stock out of the carcass because I'm a, we have a whole animal butcher shop and it's the ethical thing to do. I love rotisserie chickens. I think they are an amazing economic meal to get you pretty much through the entire week. When's the last time I had a rotisserie chicken? It's been a minute. Honestly, we used to make them at the shop all the time, and it was just like always around. So a lot of chicken tacos, a lot of chicken taco salads, a lot of chicken breakfast tacos. <laughs> all right, so I am just going to peel back both of the legs first, which, come off super easily. You barely even need a knife. For our breast, we're just gonna come down the breast plate and peel that back. It's actually cooked really nicely like a rotisserie chicken <laughs> should be. Let me also say, to buy a real rotisserie is really expensive because they cook chickens like really evenly and you can do so many. And um, it's only because grocery stores can actually afford to buy these like large cooking devices. So take advantage of the fact that other people are doing this for you and just buy the rotisserie chicken. Make your life easy. So we took off our breasts. We took off our legs and thighs. We're going to use the chicken carcass to make stock. But we have, you know, just all these little bits left that we just want to scrape off. And we're going to use every last little piece in our dip. Simultaneously, I'm going to take all of the chicken skin. So what we're going to do is actually just pull all of this off, keep it to the side. We're going to use it later in our cassoulet, but we're going to try to crisp it up to make a better version of the skin. So we have one breast that we're gonna make our chicken Caesar wrap, one breast to make our buffalo chicken dip, and our legs and thighs to make our cassoulet. And then our carcass, she's off screen for stock. So the chicken Caesar wrap, very simple. Roll it into a giant tortilla and have a nice big dinner while we prepare everything else. So first, we're gonna make our croutons. We're gonna make them from scratch because A, they're really easy. Be significantly better than store-bought croutons. Just takes a second. You already have some stale bread around. It really doesn't even matter the quality of the bread. You have stale bread, use it. All we're doing is adding what I would consider to be too much butter to the pan first. How did you put so much butter? <laughs> Just wait, <laughs> you're gonna see. <laughs> All right, once our butter is melted, we're gonna add our bread, and then just toss. Season everything, even our croutons. So just a pinch of salt, a crack of pepper. So we just wanna toss these until they are golden brown. Just throw them on a baking pan to cool while we get everything else ready. Butter bread, made crispy butter bread. We have our breast from the rotisserie chicken that I'm just gonna start pulling apart. I would say each of these portion sizes is probably, eh, I think for two or a hungry Brent. So we're just gonna chop our romaine. I'm gonna throw a handful of cherry tomatoes in there more healthy Parmesan. All right, then we have our Caesar dressing. It's really easy to make. You have anchovies, one egg, olive oil, little blended oil, little bit of lemon juice, salt, pepper, Parmesan cheese. If you wanna buy it, 
go for it. If you want to make it, you want to add more anchovies, go nuts. All right, we're going to add our croutons. Our chicken Caesar salad is ready to go. Let's build our wrap. We are going to, yeah. All right, ready? Now you're ready to take this all the way to the couch, sit down and eat this one and then probably make like three more. One a day. Mm-hmm. Every day. Yeah, I would never, ever, ever get tired of this. Turned out fantastic. And also, it took no time to do, and we can do a couple other projects while we're getting our Monday night dinner together. All right, so let's make our buffalo chicken dip. Anytime I'm home in Pittsburgh, we have buffalo chicken dip. Here's the thing about this recipe. Hey, I'm like a chef dude. I'm gonna make some buffalo chicken for my girlfriend, now wife. I only ever dated one woman, wife. She had the pleasure of having my mother's buffalo chicken dip once. And I'm gonna like put some other, you know, things in the recipe. And I got an adamant, what the f did you do? Do not mess with that recipe ever again. What you made is trash make exactly what your mother made. So we stick with the recipe here. I will say I've tried other recipes and they're just not as good. Mama Young knocked it out the park from the beginning. For the buffalo chicken dip, we are going to take off one of the breasts. It's a very simple recipe. So this is the second breast off the chicken. We're just going to shred the whole thing. All right, so we're just gonna lightly saute our onions and garlic in a pan. We just really wanna soften these. We're just trying to get the raw flavor off of the onion, but don't wanna take them so far that you would like caramelize it. All right, now that these are just soft, we're going to add our cream cheese. You really shouldn't film this. Well, there's like the whole like, wanna know how the sausage is made thing, but you really don't need to know how the buffalo chicken dip is made. All right, now everything is soft. We're gonna add it to our chicken, half cup of shredded cheddar cheese, a half cup of Frank's Red Hot, a half cup of ranch dressing. All right, once everything is together, now we're gonna throw this in the oven at 325 for 25 minutes. These are ridiculous, it's so fun. I got it, I got it. All right, we're done. Word to the wise, be patient. This is incredibly hot inside. Uh, plenty of times not been patient and burnt the shit out of my mouth. But we have the nice golden crust, looks fantastic. We're gonna go a little bit of blue cheese on top, cause why not? Throw it on the table, we're ready to serve. Flying chips. It's hot. but it's freaking delicious. <laughs> it's really hot. I'm not lying. Freaking wonderful. That's delicious. I'm so happy. Perfect. That's the way this should taste. It was easy as heck. Used up an entire breast. This is enough for many people to enjoy. Share with your friends or else you're gonna have a tummy ache. Nailed it. Also, you can make this ahead, freeze it, pop it in the oven when you're ready to go. Buffalo chicken dip doesn't fail. Last but not least is our cassoulet. Listen, calm down, okay? This isn't traditional cassoulet. We're using rotisserie chicken. This is very much a catch-all butcher shop meal for me. Let's grab the odds and ends, things that didn't sell. What do we have in the case that needs to get used? We're gonna make a nice dinner that we can have to maybe offset the fact that we just ate an entire buffalo chicken dip ourselves. So our order of operations is to first cook our beans. You have a couple different approaches here. If you want to be fancy, which you can, you can get dried beans, any white bean works. Make sure that you soak them overnight and then we're gonna cook them with our chicken stock. If you're like, Brent, I don't have the time for that. I already brought a freaking rotisserie chicken. What else do you want from me? Guess what? They make beans in cans too. You can use canned beans, that's totally fine. I'm okay with that. Honestly, I like almost every weekend, I make a pot of beans. It's so easy, it's fun, 
It's a really wonderful way to use up literally everything in your refrigerator. Cassoulet, if you look at a traditional cassoulet recipe, there's specific beans. It requires, you know, like three different types of meat. You know, specifically, you need some sort of cured meat. Use a bacon end. Yes, it's smoked. It's gonna be a little bit different. Like, but that's totally fine. So I have all of the skin from the rotisserie chicken here that it's not fully rendered. Like it's still, you know, a little juicy, a little gummy even. So we're gonna take all of this and throw it in the pan to crisp it up and use it almost as our cooking fat for the onions and garlic. We wanna start with our bacon because all of that fat actually needs to render. So we're gonna let it go in a nice low stock pot. Once this is maybe 50, 60% of the way there, starting to get a little, little golden, then we're gonna add our chicken skin to start crisping that up to make sure that that can get crispy. Then we're gonna have more than enough bacon and chicken fat in the pot that we can add our onions and garlic to saute them. All right, so once your, once your beans are added, you have everything sticking to the bottom, just a little bit there. We wanna add just enough stock to deglaze our pan. We're gonna stir to scrape everything up. It's on the bottom of that pan there. Now that we have our beans cooking and everything is fully deglazed, we're just gonna start just tearing our chicken thighs up into the pot. Cool, so get all your meat off there, save your bones for the stock. All right, we have everything working in one pot. We have our bacon, skin, our beans, our chicken legs, thighs. We're finally gonna add a little vegetable, brighten it up. You can see also, we don't have a lot of liquid left in the pot. That's a good thing. Okay, you could eat this now. It's delicious, it's ready to go. But let's make it fancy, let's bake it, make it nice. I wanna put it in these guys. Generous heaping spoonfuls. Wanna make sure that no, one, no one's going hungry here. A Little bit of fresh thyme, a little bit of fresh rosemary, and then I'm just gonna to top it with breadcrumbs so it'll get nice and crispy on top. All right, so we're just gonna throw these in an oven, about 375 for about 10 to 15 minutes. Our cassoulet's done, golden, delicious, looks fantastic. Ready to eat, let's give it a try. Whoa, big, big bite. <laughs> That's freaking delicious. Super happy with that. The chicken's fantastic. Yeah, honestly, the fresh herbs really helped. The carrots, celery, delicious. There's crispy little bits of chicken skin in here. This is good. Who made this? This is a super easy way to cook dinner for two or four. This is very generous. All right, so we prepped everything out for the rest of our dishes and they are good to go, but we don't wanna let anything go to waste. So we're gonna throw the rest in this pot and get some chicken stock going. So we have the chicken carcass from the beginning, but also don't forget we picked our legs, thighs, we had all the rest of the bits. We're just throwing everything in there so that we can have this stock to cook our beans in. You only really need enough water to cover the top of the chicken. Don't even need to use salt. Maybe season it at the end. You're gonna be using this in another dish. So we're gonna bring this up to a boil, skim it of any like creepy stuff that's on the top, then bring it down to a simmer and really just let it cook however much time you have. If you have two hours, great. If you have eight hours, fantastic, even better. The longer it goes, you know, the more flavor you're gonna get out of it. Store-bought stock tastes like shit. It just tastes like salty chicken water, where this is such a passive, easy thing to do that's going to make all of your dishes taste so much more robust. All right, thanks for watching. That was super fun. We made a rotisserie chicken into four wonderful recipes. We used a bunch of ingredients that we already had in our refrigerator and in our pantry and made three delicious dinners. So it was four, I can count. Thank you so much. Do this yourself. I appreciate you. Shop at your local butcher. <laughs>